Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you each of my favorite books from the past 10 years and reflecting a little bit on what has happened in my life and how things have changed in the past decade. So I was recently catching up on some booktube videos and was watching a video from Melanie over at Mel to the Any where she talked about her best books since being on Goodreads in the last 10 years. And it just really got me thinking and reflecting on reading in my life. I've always been a really big reader and books have always played a really important role in my life and it got me so nostalgic and emotional and soft and I kind of put together this list and did a little bit of digging and thought it would be fun to share with you guys. So I have a list of my favorite books of the year for the last 10 years and it's interesting seeing how some of those books and my reading intertwine with things that were going on in my life over the last decade as well and i will say i have not been on goodreads consistently for 10 years and so some of this was a lot of kind of digging back and remembering and thinking like what was i reading what was i doing at these times um but it was a whole lot of fun so we're gonna go back back in time to 2010 in 2010, I was 22, living in Pasadena, California, kind of working odd jobs and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life after finishing my bachelor's degree. And it was also the year that I started dating my husband. And we actually met at church and had been really good friends for like a year and dated other people. And things just kind of came together that year and moved pretty quickly from the time that we started dating. So for 2010, it was a big year. And I have two books that I want to share that are really important to me for different reasons and memorable. First is a book that was kind of a treat to myself. I think around my birthday, I didn't used to buy very many books for myself and I wanted, I was looking for something new and different, and I found this at a Barnes & Noble on a new release table and discovered a brand new favorite author. This is The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. Kate Morton is now an autobi author for me. I've read everything that she's written, and I love her, and I always read her books. She is the only historical fiction author who is an autobi for me, and I just love her, and this is the book that made me fall in love with her. She writes these epic, sort of sweeping family dramas with multiple perspectives and multiple timelines that eventually all come together and unveil dark family secrets. The Distant Hours is probably my favorite of hers. It's got more of a gothic feel to it and a creepier, slightly horror vibe more than any of her other books. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. So this was one that I discovered and it opened me up to a brand new author who I, I couldn't get enough of. So this book just means a lot to me. Um, I've had it for 10 years in my collection and what was really really cool is a couple of years ago for the first time I got to meet Kate Morton at BEA and that was such a crazy wild moment for me because I had dreamed of meeting her for so long and it had just never worked out because she's a international author and so that was just a really cool moment. But yeah this was one of my favorite books, an all-time favorite book for me, and a really meaningful book for me from 2010. The other book from that year that I wanted to share is one that I actually read with my husband while we were dating, and I think we read most of this aloud on a road trip together where we were driving from Southern California to Northern California, and we read Dune by Frank Herbert. Um, it's a sci-fi classic, and I have such love for this book. I don't love the entire series. I would say my favorites are probably the first like three books and after that it kind of tapers off but my husband and I read the first like four of these together aloud and then eventually I think one of them we listened to on audio and it was just a cool thing. It created a lot of interesting conversation because there's so much of like politics and philosophy and religion tied into this and we're both big sci-fi fans and so yeah this was just has this is our, our copy that we bought, um, picked up and read, read aloud together way back 10 years ago when we were dating. And uh, yeah, it just like holds a really special place in my heart. Then in 2011, 
we got married. Like I said, we had known each other for a while as friends, but once we started dating, it didn't take us long to sort of figure out that this was it, this was what we wanted. I think it ended up that we were dating for five and a half months, engaged for five and a half months, and then got married. So we'd been together in a relationship for 11 months when we got married. So that was a very, very busy, crazy year for me. I don't remember doing a ton of reading on my own, probably because things were so busy with planning a wedding and we got married in June and then everything was just kind of a blur adjusting to married life and moving into a new place together and it was just a very very busy year. I'm sure I did other reading but I don't remember <laughs> that much of it. But one book that I know that I did read that year that we read together and both loved it was intense but really good. Another one we read aloud. I'm like I miss doing that. We still do it occasionally, not as much as we used to before kids, but this is Under the Banner of Heaven by John Krakauer. Um, this was just so fascinating. This is also the same copy that we had that we read back in the day. It says it's a story of violent faith. This is his kind of investigative journalism looking into extreme branches of Mormonism with like polygamists and some of the like sexual violence that goes on with that. It was fascinating. I couldn't put it down. It, some of it was horrific, but it was really, really interesting. And if you haven't read this, I would recommend it. It's really fascinating read. And so this was one that we mostly read aloud. I remember though that there was one passage late in the book that I just couldn't I couldn't stomach it. And so I kind of like skipped over it. It was like a really gruesome just depiction of this crime against this woman and I was like okay I can't read this passage but other than that I found this to be really fantastic so this was my favorite book of 2011. So in 2012 there's a couple of big standout things that I can remember. One thing is that I got kind of into the local steampunk scene in Los Angeles and that was super fun so we went to some like events and dressed up and um, if I have any pictures maybe I'll like put a couple up here. My husband was kind of a trooper and <laughs> went along with me. So I got into that and started reading a little bit of steampunk which will apply to the book that I'm going to share for that year. Um, and then in the fall I started grad school. I went to USC for a master's in public diplomacy and that started in the fall and from that point on I was reading a lot of more academic books but um, did some fun reading as well. So my favorite book that I remember reading in 2012 was Heartless by Gail Carriger. This is part of her Parasol Protectorate series. I just love these. They have a little bit of a sort of steampunk Victorian vibe to them. They're paranormal romances and they're really funny. They've got this kind of tongue-in-cheek tone that I really enjoy. I like her writing style and I just adore spinster Alexia Tarabati as the heroine and this book in particular was a really really great one. So along with my kind of steampunk vibes this was one that I read and this I would say was my favorite book for 2012. So in 2013 I was deep in the middle of my master's program but I was still doing some reading and really had gotten sucked back into YA. 2013 was the year that I discovered Cassandra Clare and binge read her books um, which was perfect while in grad school because they were really easy to get through and a whole lot of fun. My favorite book of 2013 was City of Glass book three in the Mortal Instruments series. I loved this. I gave this one five stars. I think it was kind of downhill from there in terms of ratings. I didn't love the subsequent ones quite as much. I would be curious to see how I get along with this series on a reread, but I just love the world so much. I love the Shadowhunters universe. Um, and this was one that was five stars. I remember really, really loving it. The other thing though that was really cool that happened that year is one of her books came out and she made an appearance at the LA Times Festival of Books and I got to meet her and get an early copy signed of Clockwork Princess. And so that was just like a really cool moment. It was one of my first experiences meeting an author that I knew and getting a book signed and I was like super nervous and tongue tied and it was like a day or too early and so that was a big deal that we were getting Clockwork Princess early. Um, and so I've been a fan ever since. So I have For Bethany from Cassie Clare and yeah that was just like a really cool meaningful moment. What was kind of neat was, what was it, like a year ago for Queen of Air and Darkness in New York and when I went up to get my book signed I told her that the last time I had seen her when I first met her was 
with Clockwork Princess and that I'd been reading her books ever since and she was like so excited to hear that. She was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you've been reading for so long. That's amazing. Um, and you know, like her books aren't perfect, but I just really love this world that she's built and I love a lot of what she does and this just like holds a really special place in my heart. So I mostly am collecting the paperback books, but this is one that I will definitely keep because it's definitely very, very meaningful for me. So um, this was not my favorite book of the series. So favorite book of the year for 2013 was City of Glass, but I just wanted to share Clockwork Princess as well because that was just such a cool moment. So then 2014 was also a very, very big year for me with a lot of change. In the spring, I was finishing up my master's program and I was also pregnant with our first child. In fact, Conrad was born two weeks before graduation, so I was rushing to get all my papers done early and actually I took my last final exam at home when he was a week old. My mom came and watched him for a couple of hours so I could write essays. <laughs> And I did walk in my graduation ceremony. In hindsight, that was probably like a dumb choice. I was recovering from a C-section, but I was like so determined because I worked so hard for that master's degree. And then a few months later, we moved across the country to Pittsburgh for my husband's new job. And I started a new job in the fall. So that year I did not get much reading done. It was kind of a blur of academic work and pregnancy and adjusting to being a new mom and adjusting to a new city. So the book that I have for this one is one that I actually read for one of the classes that I took that spring semester and it was a really fun one. It was a class on fandom and one of the books that we read was by the professor who was basically the founder of the academic study of fandom and participatory culture which was super fascinating. So my favorite book for 2014 is Textual Poachers, Television Fans and Participatory Culture by Henry Jenkins. This was a really interesting book and one of the foundational texts for this type of academic research and I just found it to be really interesting. It deals with fanfic, it deals with sort of video mashups that fans will make of things that they love and put together, and I just found this to be really interesting. The class in general was really interesting, so I'm going to say that this was my favorite book that I read in 2014. In 2015, we were living in Pittsburgh. I was a new mom. I really wanted to make friends and get back into reading again. And so in January, I joined a brand new mom's book club and it was one of the best choices that I made. It was so great getting to meet other new moms with little babies who wanted to read and we had fun books to read and we would meet every month on a Sunday at Panera and hang out and talk books without the babies usually and that was just so great for me during that time period. Um, and I know that actually some of the women from that group watch my videos sometimes, so if any of you are watching, shout out to the Book It Moms Book Club of Pittsburgh because you guys made my life so much better. Angela is a good friend and she was a founding member. And so we read a lot of really great books and it got me back into the swing of reading after having had kids, which I deeply appreciate. And one of the books that we ended up reading was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. So that was my first introduction to the Lunar Chronicles. That was also the year I think that winter came out. So we started it relatively late. I got it from my library and I just devoured it. Absolutely loved it. And then kind of went on to binge the entire series. But my favorite book in that series and my favorite book for 2015 is Ferris. This is Lavana's backstory and I am just trash for a good villain backstory. I loved this. It's still one of my all-time favorite books. Um, I should do a reread of this at some point, like I'm probably due for a Lunar Chronicles reread, but I definitely binge read this entire series in that year and Ferris was my favorite book for 2015. So one other thing that had happened in 2015 is I started reading the Throne of Glass books by Sarah J Maas. These I was originally introduced to by a friend of mine, Rebecca, when we were visiting at a bookstore and she got me to buy Throne of Glass and Raven Boys on her recommendation, both of which I loved. So I had started reading these in 2015. And so in 2016, my favorite book of the year, I don't actually own a copy. I had it from my library. At some point I probably will own all of these, but I don't currently. But my favorite book of the year was Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. It is in fact probably my favorite or one of my favorite books in the Throne of Glass series. I really love that one. I also love Tower of Dawn, but obviously that came out much later. But Air of Fire was 
the one where she meets Rowan for the first time, which I loved that whole thing, their whole dynamic, and they kind of like hate to love romance. I'm trash for that. And so that was definitely my favorite book of the year. 2016 was another big year with another big move. We moved from Pittsburgh to New York City for my husband to start a tenure track professorship job. Academia kind of moves you around for a while until you get a full-time job. And so we're now in New York for a while, but 2016 we moved and that was the year that I was pregnant with our second kid and he was born in December at the very end of 2016. So we had another big move, another baby, which I started adjusting to the following year. A, a lot went on. Like the last decade of my life, a lot has happened as you can see. Moving on to 2017, this is the first year that I was consistently using Goodreads to track my reading and it's also the year that I started my YouTube channel. As a mom at home full time with two kids for the first time because I had worked while we were in Pittsburgh but moving to New York with the cost of childcare, I was at home with a baby and a toddler and I was going a little bit crazy and needed some kind of an outlet and in June of that year I started this and that skyrocketed me back into reading. I didn't read much the first few months of 2017 because we had a newborn and that was just like wild. But then it started picking up. I started my channel after having gone to BookCon as a birthday present to myself and was like, oh, BookTube, cool, that sounds fun, I could do that. And it's like one of the best decisions I've ever made. Looking back, I think I was probably dealing with some postpartum depression and becoming a part of this community is part of what helped me pull out of that. And it has been such a positive experience for the most part and I've made amazing friends through it. It's just been such a cool, fantastic, Thing. So in terms of favorite books in 2017, they're both books that I read as a booktuber and probably because of the book community and I couldn't decide between between these two books so I'm just going to include both of them. They're both all-time favorite books for me, one adult and one YA. My YA pick is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. I love this so much. Shifeng is the Slytherin queen of my heart. I have talked about this book in so many videos I feel like but I really really love it. If you haven't heard me talk about it before it is a reimagining of the backstory of the evil queen from the Snow White fairy tale but set in a magical version of ancient China and I love it. I Like I said I love a good villain backstory and this is such a good one. It's delicious, beautiful, and deliciously tragic and I just loved it. It's an all-time fave for me and was one of my favorite books of 2017. And my other favorite book that I read that year was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I still adore this. This entire trilogy is one of my favorite series in sci-fi fantasy. I think this is an absolute masterpiece. It's brilliant. I love N.K. Jemisin's work and this is one I would probably reread. I read these originally from my library and ended up going and buying the entire series and I have them signed. I've gotten to meet her because she's local to New York and so I've seen her now at a couple of different events and so they're signed. I don't know if that shows up on screen because it's like gold pen but um yeah absolutely love this. So these two were my favorite books for 2017. Then in 2018, um, channel continued to grow, cool opportunities started to open up. I got to go to BEA for the first time, which was very awesome. And I read a new all-time favorite book after being badgered and badgered by my friend Leanna over at Leanna's library to read this. She was like, have you read it yet? Are you going to read it? When are you going to read it? So I finally did. I'm so glad that she pushed me to read it because I love it. This is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It is an epic fantasy story with beautiful writing. It's very character driven and lushly described and I just like could not put it down, could not get enough of it. It's so intricately put together and I just love it. And um, so yeah, this was really, really meaningful to me. I now own several editions of it. And one of the cool things about this too is the way that I've made friendships with people like Liana who know me well enough and know my taste well enough that they can recommend books to me and like kind of know if I'm gonna love them or not. And um, they just, my like, my, my group of friends that I have made from being a part of this means so much to me. And uh, this book means a lot to me too. Oh, I like feel so soft and nostalgic from all of this. Um, hopefully this is enjoyable for you guys. I'm enjoying just like chatting about it and it's like wild to reflect on everything. 
so finally we come to the end of the decade 2019 um a lot of things happened i hit 5,000 subscribers <laughs> I had my very first sponsored video with Book Outlet and joined their vlogger friend program, which was wild. I had a lot of cool videos. I got to meet Sarah J. Mass randomly and took a picture with her at BEA, which was wild. I'll put a picture here. Um, I got to meet Alyssa Cole, who is one of my favorite romance authors. I just, it was such a great year. And I read another all-time favorite book and sure you've heard me talk about it recently but you know it is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern and so I have this edition here and I have this beautiful Waterstones exclusive edition let's just appreciate it because this edition is like absolutely stunning so and then look at this look at that it's so pretty you guys like this is such a beautiful book I can't get over it um, so I, you know, I mean, and the end papers with the bees, it's beautiful. So I love this. Um, this was kind of like my perfect book. I have a complete review of this, so I'll link it up above if you want to hear me gush more about it. But this was definitely a favorite for me. I think in 2019, I learned a lot more about my taste in reading, about the things that I love, that I get most excited about. And this just ticked so many boxes for me. It was a really meaningful book for me. One thing that I love is that it was partly inspired by video games, RPG video games like Dragon Age. And I love that. I, I Dragon Age is probably my favorite RPG video game series, and so that was a lot of fun for me. But I just this this just worked so well for me. I loved it so much. So there you go. That is it. Ten years of reading and life changes, and I love how books have been so integral to so many things that have happened in my life. And it's just fun to kind of reflect on how much has changed in 10 years. I got married, I had two kids, I moved across the country, um, I finished a master's degree, <laughs> like I've done a lot in the last 10 years, started this channel, and you know, we're moving into a new decade in 2020, and I'm so excited to see what the next 10 years hold. In another 10 years, I'll be like 42, and I'm excited to see where I'm at at that point and where life takes me. So if you made it all the way to the end of this, I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this and just reflecting and um, wanted to share. Talk to me in the comments down below if you have thoughts or feelings or questions or whatever. I would love to hear from you. And for your question of the day, let me know something about the last decade of your life, whatever it is that you want to share. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.